Hello and welcome to Boomer 11 podcast. Today I have with me a prestigious figure in Indian women's cricket. It is none other than Biju George, sir. He was the fielding coach of the Indian women's team who played the final in 2017 World Cup. He's been the fielding coach of Sunrisers Hyderabad and he's also been with Kolkata Knight Riders. Welcome on the podcast, Biju George, sir. It's always great to have you on the board. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So I'll first get to the question. So how has the journey been to women's cricket? We all know that you were with the under-19 Indian team and you were with Kolkata Knight Riders. And how was the transition into women's cricket back in 2017? Like 2017, I, like my first experience with the Indian women's side or women's cricket per se was like I had a, I had done a 2014-15, I had done the under-19 Indian women camp as a lead coach. It was in Gundu. Yeah. Okay. There were a couple of girls there who were still making India proud. Smriti Mandana was there, Deepthi Sharma over there, the all small kids. <laughs> and yeah. they were like maybe in their 16 or so 17, hardly yeah. all small kids at that time. I never expected to work with the Indian women's side or the women team again. I was with the Calcutta Knight Riders, like you rightly said, 2015 16. And 16, we played the quarterfinals in Bangalore against Sunrisers Hyderabad, which we lost. Yeah. Yeah, so we were packing to leave. I was asked from the NCA to report for the under 19 NCA camp, which was starting. Yeah. So I couldn't go because, like, I've been away from 50, 60 days. I want to go home. So, like, guys were pretty upset at the time. How can you refuse an assignment and all? And three days later, I got a WhatsApp, uh, sorry, SMS from Professor Ratna Shetty, big man in BCC at that time, and one of the, what do you call, legends in Indian cricket administration, upright man, honest man. He's left a legacy. Like, uh, professor's message, message was like called. I was like, I was scared. I was like, what <laughs> happened now? Okay. I didn't call. So next thing again, this call came and I called him. I said, sir, this is Biju speaking. He said, uh, Raul Raul wants you to tour with the India side to South Africa, men's side. Are you willing? Oh, I said, very much willing. Yeah, yeah 2017. This was in July. Yeah. Uh, June, July. Uh, okay. I said, sir, I would like very much to go. He said, okay, done. And I was getting ready to do South Africa with the men's side. I had got all the, uh, what do you call the dresses, everything. Then again, a call come, came from BCC which telling me that the Indian women team is preparing for the World Cup in London, in England. So why don't you be with them? And from from wherever they are, you can go to South Africa. Yeah. From the tone and tenor of that message, like that time, nobody expected the Indian women's side to reach the final, win a couple of matches. Yeah, true. Like, uh, like I went, I joined the side. First time I seen legends like Mithali, Julen up close. Huge respect for them. Yeah. I believe they are real, true pioneers, true greats. And that's how the dream started, the journey started. And we went up to the finals. It was a dream journey. I'll come to that journey to the finals. So when you joined the camp, how was the atmosphere like? Did you always imagine that this could be the this could be a start of something remarkable in Indian women's cricket, especially when you when you made that first win against England? Maybe is that where the belief started? Like we heard in 1983 when India defeated West Indies, one was that when the belief started in the team? No, I still remember like we we were based in Derbyshire. So we had gone walking in the streets of Derby myself and the chief coach, Mr. Tushar Arote. And Tushar sir was telling me like, look, Biju, we have a couple of match winners here. If these girls, you stand up and win a match for us, we are into the final. I said like, how is it? So Veda can win a match for us. Mithali can win a match for us. Yeah. Smithy can win a match for us. Yeah. Arman can win a match for us. And so it went through like all these girls, won a match individual brilliant we were like and we did well as a team we pulled together stayed together yeah. it was a hard ride yeah. uh, alien conditions cold yeah it was it was a need food food was an issue there were no net bowlers so myself and Tushar were bowling and all us stuff was there but we pulled through and we came through unlucky to lose in the finals yeah. i'll get to that semi-final match now against australia six time world champions Moving into that match, how was the preparation? Like, were the jitters and everyone? We are going to play against a top team. But you know that what happened there was Harman Preet cause brilliance, wasn't it? How was the preparation towards that match? And how was yeah, it the, the mid innings as well? The, the day before the match, somehow, I don't know. I went up to Harman and told her, like, Harry, I call her Putter, like, daughter or son. Yeah. Like, yeah. tomorrow, you're going to win the match for us. You're going to be the man of the match of the champion of the match. You know? 
हाँ सर पक्का हमें बोले गारंटी एंड लाइक इट वॉज इट रेन विल ऑफ सेली वी गैस देन हारमन केम अप एंड प्ले सच ए ब्रिलियन इनिंग्स लाइक आई आई डोंट थिंक आई लेवर सी एन इनिंग्स लाइक दैट अगेन लाइव ऑफ कोर्स should be like enshrined leaders in, in particular yeah. yeah and the sixers we were hitting were not women cricket sixers all of them were landing outside the ground and yeah. that is not a small ground yeah they were landing on the pavilion into the crowd it was like it's a bit pretty big hitting yeah we also have heard some stories from that match like where the food was delayed and some of the players fell sick after especially after the mid innings what was the story into that If you can share if you can like like food was like the girls also have finding it very tough to get used to the food which was being served like we like England and all what is there you have to eat it not we are then I don't think there's a perfect house like India we go out of yeah. the way to make sure that they are comfortable yeah and there we had to get used with whatever we served like cold potatoes cold sandwiches and yeah. whatever food is served will be taken away after forty five minutes. The Ari was totally dehydrated, and I thought when I saw her giving, being given drip in the dressing room, I thought, "Oh God, what's going to happen?" Oh God, okay. Such a tragic thing. Yeah, but it's okay. All part of the game. We also had a story where you know Harry has this curse, or Harry has this feeling that after she scores a big knock, she often tends to fail. And you played a huge role in, you know, taking that, uh, you know, giving her that belief going into that final. Especially, she was emotionally down before that final, wasn't she? Who told you that first? <laughs> we did hear about it. <laughs> huh? I did hear about it from a few of the sources. I like to tell you about it. Yeah, like Harry, Harry had this feeling, so he went up and told her, like, like you're like my daughter. Can I so can I pray for you? I prayed over her. I'm a Christian, and like I prayed over her, and I told her that the curse is broken. You're going to go out and score. She scored a fifty. Didn't win the match match for us. Yeah. Like ah. Uh, We were pretty close. The team has team was one family. Like what what a hurting one used to hurt all of us. It was, I would say it was unfortunate that India couldn't win that final because they came so close. And maybe few unfortunate incidents, especially Mitali's food getting stuck for that run out, and probably Deepthi could have if she is a mature cricketer like she is now, she would have probably finished that match off back in 2017. Now, how much do you think that 2017 World Cup journey has changed Indian women's cricket? Now looking back at it in hindsight. See the like 2017 World Cup caught World Cup journey caught the imagination of the nation because nobody gave us a dime's chance. We went up there. We were winning almost all, and when the tour matches went up very bad, we were losing matches right, left, and center. And nobody gave us a chance. And like we were coming through, we were winning against all odds. It was a dream, and like it caught the imagination of the nation. And Indian women cricket never looked back from there. I'll take I'll take you to now. Another World Cup is beckoning India. Just one month away from that big World Cup in New Zealand, we have seen the squad. So, do you think there was a big mistake in not letting Jemima in that squad? Because Jemmy has been top form the last one year. If you look in the hundred, she averages forty one. In BBL, she was in top class form. A player like her, how much of a value she would have brought into that Indian squad if she was there in the squad? See, Jemmy before she comes out to bat, she's already fifteen plus up on board because of her fielding. And like you talk about Jemmy, uh, let me add like the best fielders India had over a period of time was Jemmy Ma, Smithy, Deepthi. Deepthi has slowed down considerably. Harleen, yeah. Radha Yadav. You don't have a Harleen. You don't have a Radha. You don't have a Ekta. You don't have a Jemmy, and you don't have this brilliant fielding set anymore. So I don't know how you're going to put fielders on the fee on the ground. Like, see, the basic theory of fielding is like, I when I talk to my fielders, I talk to them in in talk to them about circles. Like, there's a circle yeah. about the width of your hand, spread of your hand, which is your catching circle. You catch everything inside that, and a bigger circle around you, which is top around that. You stop every ball which is hit in that circle. Yeah. So as a fielder. With your awareness, with your agility, with your reflex, with your reaction, with your training, you make the circles broad. That the circles intersect on the field, so there are very less yeah. gaps. Yeah. So if you look at the Indian girls now, uh, I don't think that fielding is will be as good as what we saw in the 2017 World Cup or the recent fielding side. Top class. Because uh, now the girls in the side, 
I'm not discrediting them. Won't, won't be as brilliant as a Poonam Rao at that point, a Jemima at cover, yeah. and a Radha Yadav at mid-wicket, and the Harleen Diol on the line. Yeah. So you have these fielders coming in who have to fill in pretty big shoes. Yeah, and uh, talk about uh, selection. I'm nobody to come and I'm no way connected to the women cricket, but I believe that leaving out Shikha Panda was also a big ask. Yeah, I was coming to that point because, because with, with that experience, with, with her experience, and whenever Shikha was bowling at the other end, she used to keep in tight and Julian would get the wickets. Yeah. Now, Julian will have to be the bowling coach and the lead bowler with pretty inexperienced fast bowling attack with that. Yeah. You look at experience and you have a tiny Abatia who I believe is the best wicket keeper in the world. Up to the stump, she's as good as any wicket keeper, men, women in the world. I'm not talking defining her as a women cricketer. I'm talking about a keeper. Her yeah. glove work is as good as anybody in the world, men or women. But will Tanya play? Will yeah. Tanya play? Huh. Because you got Richa Ghosh. Yeah. Richa Ghosh is a very good bat bass woman, yeah. but she won't be as good as a keeper as Tanya. So these are all the selection questions which has to be answered. But if you look. And the other side, you have the experience of a Mithali, Smithy, Harman, yeah. Julian. Good. And Deepthi is also doing good. Yeah. But now these four will have to shoulder responsibility and take things forward. We've seen that in 2020, that 2020 World Cup final as well. We have that players who can definitely change matches. For example, Shefali was one of the key stars who came out of that World Cup, who really stood apart. Now, we, talk, we spoke about fielding as well. In that 2017 World Cup, I think we took about 34 catches, nine runouts, and close to seven yeah. stumpings. Was it? We had a better ratio than we, Australia. We we, uh, we had the maximum number of direct hits also, even though yeah. not result in runouts. And in the finals, we had only one fumble. Even that one fumble did not result in a run. England had three fumbles. But looking what happens, uh, if you look at the physiological uh, capabilities of a of a cricketer from Australia, England and India, yeah. the hand spread is so big. Yeah. You have somebody standing at point who can cover maybe this distance and you have a Poonam Yadav sitting is standing there who can cover only this much distance. That's very true, yeah. So so then that is where you people with perfect agility, good speed, all this come in like girls like Jamima, Harleen, Radha. They covered a lot of space. Now, as far as Indian fielding is concerned, unless we turn up and speed up, there will be singles for the asking. And what happens with singles is strikes get rotated. Yeah. The bowler has to plan and bowl for a different bowler every ball. Yeah. So pressure builds up. No, I, it reminds me back, it takes me back to that uh, words which MS Dhoni used back in 2008 where he was building that team for 2011 where he told that he wants the best fielding side. And India went on to win two ICC championships just fielding their way out. And that's one of the same thing. What's the revolution we're seeing in women's cricket as well, especially with Australia, England, top class fielding. India was right up there in 2017, which resulted as being in the final as well. So I would like to now talk about the experience of Mithali Raj. What does she bring into the four to Indian team, especially going to a big event like this? She is the best batter in the world. Yeah. And the record says that she's better than a Virat Kohli. Stats, stats that you can't argue with stats. What is there is there. Yeah. She's very determined, fiercely focused. And this could be her last World Cup. I'm not saying that this should be. I'm saying that this could be. Yeah. Because fitness-wise, performance-wise, she can easily play on and pull on for another couple of years. Because there's nobody to take her place. People talk about like Mithali, why does she retire and all, but when she retires and goes, the gap, the hole she leaves behind. Massive. It will be too big to follow. It will be massive, massive, massive. There's a breach. Yeah. See, every team will come. Uh, like uh, my philosophy of a team is like there are two types of players. One of the steady players and the second of the impact players. Yeah. A Smithy Mandana, a Jimmy Marotic, a Harman Preet, a Shafali Verma, a Richa Ghosh. All these are impact players. You need a Mithali, you need a Deepthi and you need a Puna Raut. All these people to play some out. Yeah. Interesting because one of the criticisms which Mithali has been you know, receiving in the last one year is a template at which she plays in the modern game. 
because Australia, England, they are scoring at a higher run rate. And that's where my next question is, should India be tinkering with the template of their gameplay? We have seen the last one year, which resulted in many losses is because they're not able to convert those 220s into 260s, 260s into 280s, especially in women's game. And now that's been the demands in the women's game as well, if you look at from where we were past four years ago. Through that, but again, we have to play to our strengths. Like if you look at legend, um, I believe that the best best batsman the world has ever seen, with due respect to Sachin Tendulkar, Donald, but I believe it is Sunil Gavaskar. Towards the end of his career, Sunil Gavaskar sir had adapted to the demands of one-day cricket, and the century in Delhi was amazing. Like he was like going after the bowlers and the, how he batted against the New Zealand bowlers, even Chetfield and all these people. See, Mithali has it in her. I, had, I have seen her hitting sixes out of BKC ground. Huge sixes. She has it in her. But every time, I feel that she's pulling herself in for the sake of Indian cricket. Like, what if I get out? What if there's a collapse? Now, this is a time I believe that she should let her inhibitions go. Because there are cricketers around her who can bat through and through. And she can just let us enjoy this phase of a game. She starts enjoying this phase of the game, bowlers beware. That's a very big point which you made, sir. Now coming to another big figure in the team, that is Julian Goswam. She has been an absolute great of Indian cricket. Not just women's cricket, Indian cricket. That's what I would like to define her as. Because one of the greatest Indian ballers who have ever played the game. Tell me something about her and her presence in the dressing room. Yeah, I'll tell you, like, if you, if I have to tell you one thing about Julian Gosami, Julian Gosami he might be the only record holder in the world who doesn't have a shoe contract. She buys yeah. her shoes even now. Yeah, that's something yeah. which is fascinating. Where, which is very wrong. She's so much focused on her thing. Like, she knows where she has to bowl. She always, like, I keep talking. Even day, uh, three days back, there was a call from her. We talked for a long time. Like, even though I left in 2019, all of them, they have the freedom to call me up or ping me up. And they keep calling these people also, like, for no reason, like. Yeah. Because that's uh, a trust relationship, I believe. Yeah, that you that have the, the people. relationship still there, yeah. Julian is a legend. Julian is a legend. And the first photo I ever took with the women cricketer was Julian goes from me. I said, Julio, I want a photo with you. <laughs> it was in Lob, I remember, it was in Lobro University ground. <laughs> on the banks, uh, on the side of the stadium. I said, I went up to her and said, Julio, excuse me. So she said, yes, can I have a photo with you? <laughs> so why? I said, you're a legend. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the kind of presence, kind of impact she has in Indian cricket team and the kind of inspiration she has given to many young budding Indian women cricketers is amazing. And now her biopic is also coming. I'm sure that it will also inspire yeah. many young women to take yeah. up the sport. Absolutely. I mean. So now coming to one big thing everybody wants to know is women's IPL. How much can women's IPL impact Indian women cricket and how much of a revolution it can bring like it brought to men's game? See, uh, the time to start women IPL was last year or the year before last or the year before year before last. And I don't know why women cricket is being pushed away and segregated. They need, India needs women IPL as soon as possible. And I tell you, with 100% knowledge that if the board decides to sell women cricket franchise, yeah. there'll be more than eight or nine people ready to bid. Right? You don't have to start with 10 franchises. You can start with maybe six franchises. Yeah. I know for sure. Six franchises, done. You only have that Nidha, mini league which takes place in IPL, which has no, got a lot of traction. Which, which is also no use, absolutely. See, you, you t- if you count the number of states in India playing cricket, There'll be more than 20. Let's put it as 20. 20, 20 average said, if you want to bring, pull down Indian women cricket and play the devil's advocate, you say that the standard is there. You've got 20 cricketers playing, 20 team. 20 team into 15 players is 300 players, right? Correct. You look at the players who are contracted, like India A, India A and all. You put another 30 people. There are 330 players ready there. And you've got six teams. You, from the auction, you buy eight foreign players each, make five, not four, make five play in the 11, six Indian players. Next year, bring it down to four. And mark my words, Indian cricket will boom. 
and blossom women cricket will boom and blossom for sure and people talk about revenue generation of women cricket look at the brands which which mark which are there in the market if you look at the open the television if you have a 10 minute advertising spree more than 8 minutes 8 minutes will be aimed at the women spectators correct that's very true yeah now you are seeing players like smriti mitli all get big brands as well so they are also booming they are also in the market as as yeah. big as a men cricketer absolutely absolutely that's a big point as well i believe women's ipl not only can bring the revolution like it did in men's cricket but it can also help many women to take up the sport believing that their future is secured one of the issue with women's cricket was that their future and their jobs not being secured as well like uh, 100% because there are no employers only indian railway recruits if neda ambani ma'am decides she can easily recruit two teams in other adani group they are into cricket anyway they can start have their own team there are like many people like ready ready and group like and i'll tell you one when you coming back to women ipl see if there are crowds are open when the covid days are gone yeah. long gone you can you 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 can talk about double headers men playing in mumbai and women playing in trivandrum i'll tell you the audience they will they will have a good space in the stadium it will be full yeah. you have a 430 match in a place which is not so hot in summer for the women and have a 630 match for the men yeah. you have double headers all two double headers yeah. so the slots are ready the only thing is you need a ob van and a cameras in 34 centers not where the main api are not being conducted yeah i think we can follow the model like what 100 did like women's vbl did you, know, you saw the kind of traction you saw the kind of revenue which is generated in those Absolutely. countries yeah yeah sure so, a cricket crazy country like india will generate almost the same or even more uh, outstandingly and we will be like the quality of cricket india will pull out put out will be much better than what you see in a wbl or at 100 it looks good because the broadcast and the background the english county side looks very green and all yeah. but cricket in india will be prettier so now coming back coming to the last question so tell us through the project of mcg ground in trivandrum we've seen some of the greats come out of there especially <laughs> sanju samson now we are seeing a young budding cricketer who's almost there sean roger tell us through that project and what was the idea behind it so the thing is like it's a free coaching center and like it runs 365 days other than it's a government lockdown if it rains we try to hire some indoor hall nearby we collect the money we pool the money people come and practice and god has been good many people and this year also for the under 19 kerala side out of the 59 boys were from that center okay. sean went up two two boys came into a challenges yeah. one went on to play for like sean roger there are like even for the next 19 the few guys like abhishek nair and very talented i believe we don't we have just a very basic setup very dusty very basic setup people have gone up and played higher cricket god is good but i hope they also come back and do something for the center also which they normally don't do <laughs> people the birds fly away from the nest and they forget the nest it's very it's okay but what happened like i believe it's not the infrastructure much more it's the program which you are running is very important and the cost and the passion in which you pursue your dreams pushes you on yeah we start at 2:30 it's a summer day we finish around 6:45 it's like 4 hours of solid practice we start at 6 we finish by 9:30 7 hours a day practice is going to give you results today or tomorrow fascinating stories which has come out from mcg ground and trivandrum so it was pleasure joining you on the podcast great to hear all the stories from women's world cup to your opinion on the women's squad which will be playing in the world cup in a month in a month's time and also your mcg story as well thank you i hope you will join us in future as well and uh, i hope you had fun joining us in boomer 11 catch you up and all all of us i hope you enjoyed this episode download our app which is boomer 11 play our fantasy contest and have win a lot of prizes as well stay safe and take care